Hi folks, Mike here. Just a very quick video to exemplify the turn rules for the AI in Lone Sherman. Um, just want to make sure that people are managing to do that okay. Um, it's reasonably straightforward once you get to the hang of it, but um, it's one of those situations where the rules seem far more complex than they actually are. So let's have a look at them. Remember, you work through these rules under the AI action chart in order and if you drop through these rules the default rule then that you come to at the bottom of these rules is turn towards the Sherman and that's what's going to apply you know to the vast majority of AI turn orders so for example if this tiger was here and the Sherman was there you know this tiger would simply turn towards the Sherman which would be turning to its left so by towards remember we mean closing the angle on the Sherman as quick as possible. So again, if the tiger was facing down here and the Sherman was there, it would turn to its right. So it's the quickest way round to the Sherman, in other words. Again, you know, if, if it was here, it would turn to its left because that's the quickest way of getting round to the Sherman. Remember, if it's facing the Sherman, but not quite directly, then still apply that rule, even though in this case, turning towards the Sherman is turning right and it kind of takes it past the Sherman, if you like, so that it would then in fact, head up that row of hexes. Because if it gets another turn order, it will, or turn action, it will, of course, turn back again. So it would, you know, sometimes you'll get a couple in a row, so it will turn and then turn back again. But that's, you know, just the way it works. Usually it would sort of move and then turn again. And the idea is eventually the AI will find its way onto the same row or line of hexes as the Sherman, whether it be like that or like that or, you know, however. And that's when these rules do become more important. So what they really are is a set of tie break rules for when the tanks are in line with each other directly, um, because then we need to know which way the AI tank will face. So in that case, the first rule, if directly facing the Sherman, and the facing hex is inaccessible, but not due to the Sherman itself, then you turn to face an accessible hex and then you choose randomly. So, for example, that would be this situation here. So here we have the tiger would be directly facing the Sherman. OK, so in other words, directly along the row of hexes in its, you know, in its front facing. And the hex, the facing hex, the adjacent hex, the one that's actually facing is inaccessible, which it is because it's a woods hex or woodland hex in this case. Um, and, and that's obviously not due to the Sherman because it's due to the, the woods. Uh, then you turn to face an accessible hex and then random. So we need a tie break here. In other words, you know, the tiger's got to get around this woodland. It won't just sit there. So it's going to turn to face an accessible hex. In this case, in this example, they're both accessible. So we would decide randomly whether to turn left or whether to turn it right. Remember, a turn is always just one hex edge, isn't it? So uh, we just roll, you know, allocate one to three, four to six and, and roll off or odds and evens and just roll a die. Then. Um, if, for example, there was a, a tank there making that an inaccessible hex, then under that rule, it would turn automatically turn to face the accessible hex. And if both were inaccessible, then again, you would decide randomly and it would then turn to face one or the other of those inaccessible hexes. OK, now it doesn't matter whether they're inaccessible because they are AI units or because they are you know, terrain like woodland or water um, or, of course, because they're off the map. You now, an off, off map hex, remember, is, a, is deemed to be in, inaccessible. So it will turn the other way in that situation if necessary. Right, so that's the first rule. OK, so remember, the vast majority of times it's just turned towards. But when you've got a situation where they're in line with each other, the tiger is to the front of the Sherman <clears throat> and the tiger's route is blocked for some reason, maybe by its own, it will then decide to face an accessible hex and then choose randomly. If that's not the case, then the other thing that might be occurring is that the AI is facing away from the Sherman and the Sherman is directly behind it, which is, again, another situation where we need a tie break, of course, because whether the tiger turns left or right, that's the same angle round. So we need some way of deciding <clears throat> which way it's going to turn. And the, the rule is the same. In this case, turn to face an accessible hex. Again, in this case, they're both accessible. And if, they, if so, choose randomly. 
Um, and again, if one was inaccessible like that, then you would turn towards the accessible hex. And if they're both inaccessible, again, choose randomly. Okay, so the idea is that you know, the, the AI is going to try and turn as quickly as possible around and it'll pick a random way to do that. But obviously, once it has turned, if it had two turn, turn orders, it would turn randomly, first of all, in this situation. The second turn order, it would then turn to its right, obviously, because now it is, there is a clear way, which is the quickest way to get around to the Sherman. So these tie breaks are not going to be needed that often. The final one, then, is if it's directly facing the Sherman, then it won't turn. And of course, we've already tried rule one, so we've already covered the situation where the tiger's path is instantly blocked, and in, this, in that case we know it will turn to the accessible hex. <clears throat> what we're thinking of here is where it's facing the Sherman and it's the hex next to it is not blocked, it's not inaccessible, then it simply won't turn. It's already facing the Sherman, so there's no need to turn. It'll move, of course, on a move order, but it, it won't turn away from the Sherman once it's facing it. And this, you know, so wherever that would be. It would be facing it and that applies also if there you know if it's there if the, if the line is blocked further on it's still facing the sherman so it won't turn away it'll sit and wait for move orders and it'll move eventually it'll get there of course by which time it will decide to turn you know, in this case randomly and then find its way around the woodland <clears throat> uh, the rationale behind that is you know the, the most efficient thing to do for the ai is, is to move forward and in the interim the sherman may you know the player may move the sherman out in which case if it gets a turn order, then it would obviously move that way and go. So that's why that's there. Um, so, you know, nice and easy, really. Nice and easy. Uh, that's it. Uh, you know, just an example of where it says, if directly facing the Sherman and the facing hex is inaccessible, not due to the Sherman. Well, if it was due to the Sherman, that's, that basically means that situation. You know, it was something like that, where the AI is facing the Sherman. And the Sherman is blocking its way. And that basically means, you know, you're right there. So the AI clearly not, again, not going to turn in that case. Um, it will just sit there and presumably fire at you. Okay. So that's how the turn rules work for Lone Sherman. Thanks very much.